Well, hello and welcome to this little tutorial. I'm Niall from Comunda and I'm going to step through with you how uh, DMN works. Um, we have a fun project lined up. All of it is here in case you want to follow it um, on GitHub so you can download it and try it each stage. We'll begin by building a very basic DMN table, a nice introduction, but things will get quite complex from then on because that way we start building some integration into BPMN. We'll then go and add some uh, DRD elements, so decision requirements diagram elements, including the brand new business knowledge models that we have implemented which are really fun and then finally we'll create a quite complex um, table with some advanced features and patterns for this video we are going to focus on the basics of decision model and notation so by the end of this you should be able to build with confidence a pretty okay dmn and understand the various components of it and to do that we are going to use commander's modeler a link to which is on the bottom so let's get started so for today's example, we're going to start with the idea of uh, deciding whether someone is eligible for an upgrade. In this case, we'll imagine an individual user is has got access to um, a modeling platform that they use online all the time. And they're wondering, can I get an upgrade on, uh, on, on my platform? And maybe in this case, we offer certain um, uh, upgrades only in certain cases. And so we're going to build a DMN table today in which we're going to take into account the rules to why we would offer an upgrade or not. And of course, we're going to start right here. I've given this um, uh, a name, eligibility check. We're going to go here to create new and we're going to create our first DMN table. There we go. And this table then is going to be the foundation for what we're going to build. This is going to be called decide on upgrade uh, eligibility great and we have our single decision and this is going to be also called decide on um, upgrade okay um, cool so we'll come back to this screen here. What we're looking at is a DRD, a decision requirements diagram. But right now we're going to click this little blue button here. I'm going to go into the table itself. So this is where you build your uh, DMN model. And I want to talk through some of the elements we're looking at. The very first thing is we want to see is the HIP policy. This is the first thing you look at when you're designing a new table and it's fundamental to understanding how you're going to be building it. Um, the default is unique. And that just means is that every single rule you add will need to be um, uh, matched and no other match, right? So a unique rule must match every time you send in values. So it's a constraint that you're adding. So that means that when you evaluate the table, it evaluates every single rule and then it expects that exactly one or none uh, will match and no more. If, if uh, any more um, uh, do match, then it, um, it, it throws an error. The next one here is first. This is probably the most common one to use, and this adds an additional bit of complexity. By using first, it basically says that uh, each rule will be added, but the order in which they appear is, is also important, unlike in unique. So in this case, they'll be the, we'll run through each rule sequentially until one matches. And then once one matches, we'll stop checking and then continue. Um, the other interesting one here is collect, which I'll talk about later, which is when you might want to add up or um, uh, get a, uh, a, a, a an object that contains all of the values that match. So more than one rule is allowed to match, and we'll talk about that later. For now, we're going to go with first. So we're going to develop a table that's going to be a first hit policy. and. The next thing we look at here is we have inputs and we have outputs. So the inputs are the variables going in, obviously, and the different things we're checking. So this is all the available data we have to check. And the outputs is what the output is going to be. So for instance, one of the things might be a user status. Great. And uh, then this might have some predefined values. There are two statuses. There's VIP and there's also regular. Okay, so now we have a string. Okay, so this is a status that is a string. Um, it's only got two possible values, VIP or regular. So we'll leave that be. So we have more information. The next one is going to be uh, engagement score. 
how they engage um, on the uh, on the app. And this is going to be a string. This is going to be a number. Great. So this is going to be some integer that comes in. So now what we have is we have a user status and an engagement score. And um, we have and it's a, a string and a number. And next up we're going to add a Boolean. And it's going to be is uh, under 18. So if they are like still in school or they're not an adult yet, they probably aren't going to pay for much, but this is going to be a Boolean. So there we go. This is either going to be true or false. Okay. And then finally, we have another Boolean. This one's called student. And this is also a Boolean. Great. And the output is pretty obvious. We're, we're trying to decide something here. So specifically, we're going to decide is eligible for upgrade and this is definitely a boolean great and so true or false so let's let's go through some of the rules we're going to add now now when i say a rule because we're dealing with a rules table here i'm we also do them as rows so columns are the inputs and outputs and the rows are going to be the uh the rules themselves. So let's start with the first one. So the way a rule works is um, it runs through, you can see here when the top right, something here and this and this and this, then the answer. So how does that look? So let's try this when VIP, so when the user is a VIP and the engagement score, let's say is, uh, let's say, uh, greater than or equal to uh, 25. Great. Um, it doesn't matter if they're under 18 and it doesn't matter if they're a student. So this is a common thing. What happens if we don't really need to use the input? Well, if you leave it blank, it basically says whatever value this is, it'll, it'll be fine. Whichever value here it is, it'll also go through. And in the end, we just need to tip this as being yes. So now what we have is a rule that says if there's a VIP who is uh, has an engagement score of over 25, nothing else really matters. We just are saying absolutely give them uh, the upgrade, which now I'm realizing is spelled uniquely. So let's try and fix that. Upgrade. There we go. Cool. Uh, next up, next rule we'll have. So let's go here. And again, this time we'll take uh, a regular user. Cool. And if the regular user, they have a similar thing. If they have a much, much bigger score, so they need a 40. So a very engaged regular user will then be, uh, or sorry, if they're less than that, let's try that. Let's, let's equal to, great. Uh, then false. Okay. Cool. So what we've done here is we're using feel. Uh, on, in each of these. So we're testing against the input needs to match regular. It needs to be less than or equal to 40. Um, if it's that, then it's false. So anything over 40 then is eligible. Um, so what about students? Okay, well, we don't want to accept just every student. So assuming they are somewhat um, uh, uh, engaged, and they're a student, then we'll, we'll we'll say they can get an upgrade. And in this case, we're not. I'm not going to use the uh, UI here, which is nice to add it. I'm just going to type it directly. So I can say if the value is greater than or equal to 20, um, and they are a student. So if they are a student, then we will give them uh, an upgrade. Great stuff. So that's all any student who has a pretty big up, uh, um, uh, engagement is pretty OK. But then like what about like high school students or people just starting university? Well, if someone is under 18 and they're also a student, we'll also just give it to them, even if they've just first co just come across the tool. OK, and the next thing we're going to do is, which is really important, and especially in a hit, it, it, in a first hit policy is we need a final rule to catch everything else, right? So if we go through each one individually, we get to the end. So if we get this far, it doesn't matter what the scores are, they just don't get a, 
they don't get an upgrade. There's no other scenario where we want them to have an upgrade. Okay, and here is our first DMN table. Looks pretty good. In the next video, we're going to implement this um, entirely and then run it and see how it works in, in conjunction with a BPMN model. So, see you then.